on there too. Now, the end of the Cold War in the early 90s brought to a close half a century of Cold War spies and secrecy, an era when even the maps of the UK were censored to prevent espionage. However, it's only now that some hidden locations are coming out of the cold. Tonight, Phil, the toughest Tufnell, peers through the thaw. 30 years ago, it was still the Cold War, and I would not have been able to stand right here. Firstly, because I might have been shot on sight because this was a secure US airbase. And secondly, it might have been a bit hard to find because this would have appeared as simple farmland on the map. It was only recently that sites such as this decommissioned military base and other scary relics from the Cold War were allowed to be shown on maps. Colin Leckenby has been a surveyor for the government's mapping agency for 30 years and he has seen this radical change for himself. We were restricted in what we could show by the Ministry of Defence and the security services and, and for example this site here we just wouldn't be showing on the map. To all intents and purposes it wouldn't exist. And that's changed now? Yeah, oh yes, that's, uh, that's changed. It changed around about 2003 when the internet became much more active and available. People can see things on the photography and um, you know we, we show information on the maps. Aren't we in danger of giving out all our state secrets though? Well not really, it's there out in the the public domain. Today, images like these are freely available on the internet. Here's the site where we store all our Trident missiles before they're loaded onto submarines. This is the country's largest nuclear reactor. And here's the UK's top secret listening post. And leading this revolution since 1997 is a UK company who have used survey aircraft like this one, piloted by a pair of crop dusting Kiwis to map the UK. So, Willie, you're the pilot of this little baby. Can you go wherever you like? Uh, you can't, Phil. You've got to file flight plans, but as soon as you're above 3,000 feet, you can go wherever you like, because we operate under the Open Skies Agreement. And how do you go about making a complete photographic map of the UK? We take loads of photos. Navigator makes up a plan. We go and fly it. Basically, it's like crop dusting at 10,000 feet. So this is the camera here? It's, uh, it costs around about a million quid. Whoa! Yeah, it's a pretty cool piece of kit, Phil. We fly at a 15 centimetre resolution. So how does that compare with satellite imagery, for example? Most satellites, they operate with a one metre resolution. So that gives you a lot clearer picture? Definitely, Phil, definitely. This is all very impressive, but I need to prove it for myself. On a typical flight, the team will take up to 4,000 images, which makes enough data to fill 880 DVDs. Nice. And to be honest, I'm looking forward to the results more than the flight itself. Whoa! Okay, about 200 knots, which is the equivalent of three miles per minute. Now that's pretty quick. How does the camera catch up with that? Basically, Jason behind us there, he set it all up. It's all automatic, run by the GPS and it's taking around about a frame a second. So you're pretty confident that we will be able to see anything that's down there? I'm pretty confident, Phil. That is amazing. Comrades, I have seen the future. No more do we need to hide our secrets from the map. There's no longer such a thing as a secret base. And if you want to identify a mysterious lump of concrete behind a chain link fence, just look it up on the internet. So there you have it. Next time you see a small plane crisscrossing the skies, you'll know there's nothing to worry about. It's not Big Brother spying on you to see if you're an enemy of the state. It's probably a pair of kiwis mapping your area for you. Oh. I knew I didn't see any crops of dust round here. <laughs> ah, Go on, Tuffers. Still not as fit as he used to be, but there he was, doing his best Cary Grant impression from that movie, North by Northwest. And ending up on his backside. Justin, <laughs> uh, a couple of times you've ended up on your backside filming this.